In this short video, we'll be looking at the role of significant digits when measuring devices are used properly. We'll be looking at the use, proper use with significant digits of a meter stick, a graduated cylinder, and a triple beam balance. Proper measurement always involves using the available markings on the instrument and estimating one additional number between the markings. We call the digits that come from the instrument's markings themselves the certain digits, and the one estimated digit that we tack on to the end we call the uncertain digit. And it's the uncertain digit that if you and I make the same measurement, we might disagree by one or two uncertain digits, but we definitely have the certain digits that we both agree on. So this combination of the certain digits that come from the measuring device and the one tacked on to the end that is estimated between the marks, those together are called the significant digits in a measurement. If we take a look at this measurement of 0.8764 meters, if the measurement has been made properly, anyone else viewing this measurement understands that the first three significant digits are all certain digits according to the measuring device that was used, and the one tacked on to the end that is the uncertain digit um, is where the user of that instrument estimated between the markings. So reasonable people using the same measuring device would agree that this measurement was 8, 7, and 6, and then two, diff two people might disagree on whether or not that last estimated digit is actually a 4 or not. But nonetheless, all of these numbers combined make up the significant digits within a measurement. Okay, so here I've drawn a line of an undetermined length, and we're going to use this meter stick that has been marked off in tenths of a meter on the side of the stick. We're going to use this to properly measure the length of this line. And so I'm going to line up the measuring device, and we're going to look at how it compares. Now with this first measurement we're going to make, we can be certain that this line is one-tenth of a meter because the line extends beyond the one-tenth mark. So our certain digit, in this case, will be point 0.1. Now we must estimate between the markings available to us on the instrument. This is where you and I might disagree with both of us measuring the same length of the line. So I'm looking at here is the halfway point and I'm going to estimate that this line extends beyond the point one marking two one hundredths of a meter. So now we've just recorded significant digits in this measurement using proper measuring technique according to the marks that we have available to us on the instrument. If I flip the meter stick over 90 degrees this side of the meter stick is now marked off to the hundredths of a meter. And now I can be certain that the line extends beyond, well, first of all, let's back up. I'm still certain that this line is 0.1 meters at least. And now, out to the next place, I can be certain that this extends beyond the 0 0.02 marking and so we're still certain that this is point 0.2 and now I must estimate between the markings. In looking at this now, here's point 0.2 and here's point 0.3 and once again I'm going to estimate that that is at about two tenths of the way between those two marks. And so my estimated digit in this case is another 2. So I've just made another measurement with one additional digit of precision. If I flip the meter stick one more time and line it up, this meters, this side of the meter stick is now divided into 1,000 pieces. And I'm going to try to zoom in as best I can here on the measurement. We're still certain that this is 0.12 if we zoom in a little closer, we can see it is 0 0.12, and now we have an additional marking that we can record, and I'm going to say that is just 
past the 2 marking. So this will be 0 0.122. Now I must answer the question, where does this line fall between the 2 and the 3 marking that is available on the instrument? And I'm going to estimate that it's at about a 3 between the markings. And I'm going to, once again, increase the precision of my measurement to 0.1223 meters. So I've just completed measuring the same line using three different measuring devices that all had differing degrees of precision. And in each case, the last number was an estimate between the available markings on the instrument. And as you can see, as we turned the meter stick over and went to progressively more precise sides of the meter stick, we were able to make more precise measurements as we went along. Here I have an object on the triple beam balance. It's a stapler. And I've set the triple beam balance so that the mass of the beams is equal to the mass of the stapler. And you'll notice that I have determined with certainty that this stapler is 100 grams plus 50 grams plus 3 grams, so we're up to 153 grams. Now in looking at the markings on the instrument, I'm certain that it's 153, and I'm certain that it is 153.7. So my measurement for this will be 153.7, and my last digit is estimated as a 3. I've put some water in a graduated cylinder. This graduated cylinder is marked off to 100 milliliters. I'm going to set this down nice and level here and I'm going to zoom in on where the meniscus is. Now you can see that we are certain to agree that there is at least 60 milliliters in here. There's 65 and there's 67 and the bottom of the meniscus falls right here just above 67 milliliters and so we are certain that this is 67 milliliters and now we have to estimate between the two lines and I place the bottom of the meniscus right about there making for about 0.3 in between so I would record this measurement as 67.3 milliliters, with 3 being my uncertain digit on the end. Pictures for school, take 2.